Hey everyone, it's John Lorden. Uh, I am feeling a little bit better. Had a video that I wanted to get done for you guys this week, so i um, sorry that we missed a couple of shows there, but every now and then just unforeseen events kind of do that. Uh, thankfully, I got this cool message from YouTube talking about what my channel has done this year, and uh, we're certainly on track to hit at least 150 videos that we've done just on this channel. That doesn't include the 12 episodes of Crime After Crime and at least, I think, 11 or 12 episodes of Three Men and a Mystery. So a lot of great content there. If you haven't seen some of that old stuff, please tear it into that back catalog. All those cases need attention and help. Speaking of, in that back catalog, you will find the case of William John B.J. Ward. This is a case that we started covering about two years ago, uh, and I got pretty close to in terms of um, friends and family members that I communicated with. There was several follow-up videos. As a matter of fact, I'll have those in the description box down below so you can check those out if you would like. We have to do an update video on this one. It's one of those updates I really don't like doing, but um, we do have remains found in this case. So over at MeadvilleTribune.com, uh, human remains found in September confirmed as those of missing Venango County man. So this is actually a discovery that happened a while ago. I've been in contact with the family and... Um, I don't think you ever get used to something like this, but the response that I get from them uh, seems to suggest that maybe they've known about this for a while. And, and certainly with this type of time frame, it seems like that could be the case. Uh, from this article, foul play is not suspected according to Crawford County Coroner Scott Schnell, uh, or Shell, sorry. Um, what's curious about that is we don't really have any signs of trauma or injury to the remains. Um, so we're still left with this question of, okay, then exactly what happened? Cause we've got a pretty young man here. Uh, if I do recall correctly, he might've had a few, um, medical needs, but I didn't think it was anything all that urgent. So I'm just kind of curious about, uh, what could have actually happened here. Uh, the remains were found September 29th in a wooded area off Stedman road in Troy township by a hunter. Ward was reported missing in June of 2017, last seen in that same area, according to state police at Corey. So certainly makes sense. Uh, we have him found pretty close to the location he went missing. Of course, that raises some questions in terms of, you know, search efforts, like, you know, why, why didn't we find him? But if you take a look at the satellite view, uh, we're talking about a very brushy area, uh, looks like a lot of foliage and we've got uh, state game lands and it, it's just, it looks like a tough area to search. Um, DNA was tested from what I've seen in other articles. I believe it was actually tested against his father and it was found to be a 99.99993% match. Uh, and that's according to the county coroner as well. This is where a lot of these cases go that sometimes just leaves me uncomfortable because you're talking about uh, a body being found two and a half years after the fact now. Uh, we've got no signs of trauma or injury to the remains, but what kind of condition are those remains in at this point? You know, I would imagine that a lot of the soft tissue probably isn't there anymore. So unless it was something obvious, like, um, you know, if he was attacked by someone and they use a knife, the knife would have not only had to have wounded him mortally, but also uh, hit a part of his bone somewhere and left a pretty identifiable mark. And of course, there's a pretty good chance that that isn't always going to happen. And that's kind of what leaves me uncomfortable about when cases hit this. I appreciate that the family has at least an answer, but then it leaves you with all these other questions and the mechanism for determining the answer to those questions, you know, a good solid evaluation of the deceased. I don't think you're able to get that um, because of the, the quality of the remains. So that's really where I'm kind of concerned about this. Like I mentioned, I did reach out to the family and just expressed my condolences. Uh, and of course offered if there's anything that I can do to help them further. I don't know if they need any fundraising, um, you know, for memorial services or anything like that. But, uh, of course, if they do, I'll be sure to let all of you guys know. Um, it's tough because this is kind of the answer we're looking for. But then it leads to all these other questions, and I just feel terrible that BJ's family uh, might not have all the answers that they quite need to really process this fully, um, but they do have one answer, so... 
Thank you so much for following along and caring about this case like I have. Uh, really appreciate you guys out there and uh, just wanted to drop a video for you this week. So, you know, I'm okay. I'm here. Things back to normal on Monday uh, with a brand new episode of Case Crack. Take care and I will see you there on the Lord and Arts channel.